أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in this chapter as we continue to discuss the characteristics of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib as we previously discussed bravery in this chapter إن شاء الله we're going to aim to in a brief aspect discuss the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. As we know, when justice is concerned, you'll find the works of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and the traditions that we have from how he established his government is revered not only by Muslims, but you'll find many non-Muslims have written articles upon articles and books upon books. One can only go towards the book of George Urdar where he labels the title of the book The Voice of Human Justice, signifying that in order for you to understand what true justice is, whether it be politically, whether it be within your own households, whether it be in a community, in a job aspect, that there is a particular level of justice that can be administered if you are to read into the works and the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. So we'll find beautifully that justice prevailed in Islam for a period of four years, six months and eleven days, which were the time of the ruling of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now to get a better understanding of Amir al-Mu'mineen's justice, to showcase to us how Amir al-Mu'mineen took the first step to establishing his justice. You'll find in Basra, as Amir al-Mu'mineen is put into power and people are opposing Amir al-Mu'mineen because of the actions that they had against him, these people fought Amir al-Mu'mineen for many a reason, one of which was his justice. And we understand this because in Basra, people came from all over to give their allegiance, their bay'ah towards Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ibn Abbas narrates, he says, when we are in the civil war, the first civil war in the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen's reign as Khalifa, the Qaba'il leaders, the tribe leaders, people that were very prestigious, came towards Amir al-Mu'mineen to, to give their allegiance as well as offer their armies in support of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Now, as you know, the leader always has a tent. And when Ibn Abbas brings forth these leaders, he doesn't find Amir al-Mu'mineen within the tent. And so they, he, he looks around to find Amir al-Mu'mineen. All of a sudden, he's, he's told that Amir al-Mu'mineen, we saw him behind the tent. So he goes around the tent and he sees Amir al-Mu'mineen fixing his sandals, shall we say. And Ibn Abbas says to him, says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Qaba'il have come to give their allegiance to you. And he says, Oh Ibn Abbas, what's the value of this sandal that I am fixing? He goes, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, it has no value. I mean, that's the reason why you're fixing it. And he says to Ibn Abbas, a very valuable lesson that we need to understand about the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen and how he sought to establish justice. He says, O oh, Ibn Abbas, this sandal is more love to me than this khilafah of yours. Except that I can establish justice and eradicate tyranny. Amir al-Mu'mineen, when he's given the allegiance, you can imagine what Islam was at that particular moment and how Islam went far from what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established before his martyrdom. And you begin to understand Amir al-Mu'neen, the first actions he did, or actions that he took, was that he removed all the previous governors that were there. So every governor that the third Khalifa established and put into positions of power, Amir al-Mu'mineen removed every single one of them. And he says all that wealth that was given towards these governors need to be returned. 
Why? Because you find that the downfall of the third Khalifa was that amongst many, that he gave positions of power to his ne nearest of kin, let's say, his cousins, his family members. He would give them power, give them wealth, give them positions. And that was one of his downfalls. So he says, you know, this placement has been more towards that of relationship rather than merit of that person to run that place of government. And if we want to look at it, Amir al-Mu'mineen's government covered what we look at now to be approximately 52 different countries in the world now. Amir al-Mu'mineen's government was established in what is now 52 different countries. So you can imagine he removes all of these gov governors and he replaces them with new ones that Amir al-Mu'mineen has chosen. So you can imagine why a person like Marwan al Hakam comes and says the statement. He says, the justice of Ali made it easy for us to fight him. Why? Because these people were used to power, used to position, had people, as we can say, on the payroll. All these people, all of a sudden, their wealth is removed, their position is removed, their prestige is removed. Why? Because they're not deserving of that position. However, they have that animosity towards Amir al-Mu'mineen. Now they have hatred for Amir al-Mu'mineen. But it's not the hatred for him, it's for the justice as well that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib tried to establish. So you'll find on one level that begins to occur. The second, you'll find the closest companions to him, the people that supported him when his reign was taken, you know, of them was a Zubair. Zubair comes with Talha in a tradition and they wait for Amir al-Mu'mineen. And you'll find Ammar would be at the door. And he says to them, you know, he's going to be a while. And he says, no, we're going to wait for the Khalifa of the time. And they're waiting and waiting and waiting. Ammar brings them food. He says, no, we're going to wait for the Khalifa. And then he asks them, why are you waiting for the Khalifa? Is there anything that I can assist you with? He says, no, we're going to have dinner with him. When we're having dinner with him, we have a few things to discuss. Let's look at what Ammar says to Talha and Zubair to give you an insight of how Amir al muminin in his first moments, his first night, tried to establish justice within his government. That Ammar says to Talha and Zubair, he says, Amir al muminin is not going to eat tonight. So Talha and Zubair says, what do you mean? He's the Khalifa. It's his first day in office. Why is he not eating? He says, Amir al-Mu'mineen said to me that tonight I'm going to tie a rock on my stomach. They said, why? He says, Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, that now I've established, this is my first night establishing my government. I want to tie a rock on my stomach and I don't want to eat. In case there's one person anywhere in my Government that sleeps hungry. I don't want to make, I want to make sure that I am not quenched while there's one person in my government that is hungry. And that's why you find that he did not make any difference like the previous Khalifas. This person's Muhajir, Ansar, Makki, Madani, different colors like the previous, no. He says everyone is equal when he takes up two pieces of sand. When a person comes and says, this is, my, this is me, that I want to take my wealth, and this is my servant that I freed. And he gives them an equal amount of three gold coins. He says, I told you he used to be a slave. He goes, he takes up soil from the earth. He says, do you see a difference between these two piles? He says, neither do I. He says, in the eyes of Allah, we are all equal. Such is the justice of Amir al muminin That's why he tried to establish, and that's why people fought him, because they didn't want this justice. They didn't want the justice of Amir al muminin in that aspect. When a person comes towards Amir al muminin and he's waiting for him to ask him for a government, government position, he sees Amir al muminin in the night, working for his government and writing letters to different government, governors. So as Amir al is writing for different governors, this person is waiting. 
So Amir Unin looks towards him and he says, have you come for a question for me as a Khalifa or have you come to talk with me as Amir al in Ali ibn Abi Talib? He says, no, I've come to you in a personal issue. He says, no problem. Let me finish and I'll, and I'll come towards you. So Amir al in the tradition says, as he finished, he turns off that candle and he faces this man. So the man says to Amir al he says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, why would you take off the candle as in its light? He says to the man, he says, I've bought this candle with the money from the government. I cannot use this candle for my personal talks, let's say. So you find Amir al Mu'mineen all of a sudden has told this person that, you know, I am so just in every single coin that is spent and how I use my wealth, and for what reason. That this person later on fights Amir al muminin because he could not understand the fact that he can be that just in his actions. And the fact that if he's that just, no way he would let a person like that be in a position of power because of how corrupt he was. So you find this amongst many other stories that showcase to us the justice of Ali ibn Abi Talib. To go a step further, to showcase to us how Amir al muminin did not let anything affect him in his justice. When you find on a night like tonight, where we remember Amir al muminins strike, we look towards Amir al muminin and what he said on that morning to Abu Muhammad and al Hassan. He says to him, he says, Ya Hassan, make sure that yes, he's been taken because he committed a crime when he struck me. However, as the law states, a strike for a strike. Do not hit him more, do not hit him less. He struck me once, you strike him once. If he dies from that strike, so be it. If he survives, so be it. Who can come and say that they had that level of justice of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib? Especially in a position of government like Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib. And that's something that we really need to contemplate over, learn from, try to establish in whatever level that we are all responsible. We are all responsible either of ourselves, of our families, our wives, our husbands, our children, our parents. We have responsibility within our life to be just in what we do to not be oppressors, to not take advantage of people. As we know, the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman sees everything that we do and he's choosing us to be part and parcel of his army, let's say, of his people, of his followers, of his supporters. Don't think if you are unjust in any part of your life, unjust to anyone within your life, that you have a better chance. No, you have a worst chance to be of the companions of Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman So let's take this understanding of the justice of Amir al-Mu'mineen, this brief understanding of his justice, and try to establish justice within our lives, insha'Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.